of right now. You may have noticed a fair few Americans running around town, and that's for good reason, because the US Navy 7th Fleet is here, and I've heard their band many, many times, and I thought, wow, we'll be cool to find out a bit more about it. So it's a pleasure to welcome to the program Geordie Kelly, who is the bandmaster of the Navy 7th Fleet Band. Good to see you. Good to see you too. And you've got your bodyguard with you, Colin Ageson from Ned Kelly, to <laughs> eh? Why, I me once again, I, and I'm the real Geordie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's debatable. <laughs> Thanks very much for bringing him up. Pleasure. I, I wrote on my notes this morning, Geordie, you know, Seventh Fleet, blah, 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 homed in Yokosuka in Japan, and Ned Kelly is in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> How many times, I mean, it's not that far away. How many times have you actually been here? This is my second time in. 11 months. I've only been stationed in Seventh Fleet Band uh, for 11 months now, uh, but this is my second trip. And it's fun. It's great. This right. is my favorite spot to, to come to. I bet they work, you guys. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, people think music in the civilian world is tough, but boy, it must be for you guys. We, we deploy, as they say, quite often. Actually, uh, our flagship is back in port now, and they have some downtime. But the band, uh, we don't. We, we, we took off, and here we are in Hong Kong to do this center. We're happy to do it, uh, but boy, do we stay busy. We've been in suitcases and seed bags since February of this year, and it doesn't end until the end of August. Brilliant. And you have to play all sorts of things. I talk with loads of musicians here. It's great fun, and the word that keeps coming back is versatility. I mean, mm. it couldn't be more so for you guys. Tell me the, tell me the breadth of what you do. Oh, gosh. We play everything from uh, woodwind quintets and brass quintets to big band and concert band. And sometimes we combine with uh, uh, other orchestras like the Yoko Yokosuka Symphony Orchestra or um, JMSDF, which is a Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. Mm -hmm. uh, their concert bands, and we'll have a huge concert band to do combined things uh, Everything, all styles. Uh, there's not a style that we don't do except for we don't have strings. So when we combine with a, a symphony orchestra, we, we do pieces with strings. Yeah, I was going to talk about the symphony orchestra thing. Very often military bands get called in to do the last few minutes of 1812 overture. <laughs> do, you, do you guys? I mean, it's a very British thing, that one. But do you ever find yourself doing that? Uh, I tried. This is a I tried not to. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I tried to get something happening. But this is the uh, one of the commemoration years for the 1812. Uh, uh, no. Kidding. Yeah, the the two hundredth it's bicentennial, and uh, the, in the states they're doing a lot of uh, combined concerts and celebrating that, and they're actually bringing in. Uh, there's an Australian band right now. Uh, one of my colleagues here at the Coliseum said, "You know, gosh, we have a band in D.C., and that's where I was last in right. that band." And uh, then I saw on Facebook some of my friends from that band. They 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 posted pictures with with those guys. This was so small world, but uh, really? over here it's not. Uh, our, our mission is different. Uh, it's not that. That's more of a probably a U.S. specific type of celebration yeah. than what we do throughout uh, Oceania here. When you talk about mission, that's an interesting word because you're not just musicians in any military service. There must be a technical thing of what your role is supposed to be. I'm sure I'm sure hundreds of years ago, talking about 1812, morale on the battlefield. Or mm -hmm. what, what, what do they say for you guys? Well, the Seventh Fleet Band's mission is what they call theater security cooperation, TSC. And what we do is we go uh, wherever the ship goes, our flagship, USS Blue Ridge, or even if the ship doesn't go, they send us places like uh, Hong Kong or different places. Um, and we get out in the community and we do anything from Comrail, which is community relations. Yeah. Uh, we were in Samoa recently, and we performed. Uh, their villages and tribes there, literally yet still. You must and, have blown their minds. Yeah, that was that was pretty great. We got we got stranded there actually for an extra almost week, and uh, <laughs> tough tough work, but. Um, yeah, we'll we'll go into places and do impromptu uh, anything from Dixie Band to uh, you know a small sort of concert band thing. Yeah, and then you go into those real sort of uh, areas where people won't have even seen too many uh, too many Westerners. They certainly won't have seen most of the instruments that you're playing, like Ned Kelly's, for instance. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah well, they they uh, they sent uh, uh, there's two islands in what's formerly Western Samoa. That's where we were, and they sent us the island of Savai'i, and uh, we were the first military band. Uh, there, uh, first Navy band, first any band there, and and then uh, we went to another village. I can't pronounce the name of it, but uh, said we were the first Americans there too. Great. So 
I've got, I've got to congratulate you. We've been going for five minutes and you haven't said I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic yeah. stuff. What's, well, the, what's the scene like? I mean, you must do a lot of home gig, well, home gig, gigs in Japan. I mean, it's going to be so, so different to Hong Kong. But just tell me about the musical vibe there, because I hear it's great. Oh, it, it's really wonderful. Um, we stay busy, a lot of us, we stay busy outside of the, the Navy band uh, locally. Um, but in, as far as in the Navy band, typically we have from February to, as I said, uh, September-ish, where we do everything from Russia to Australia or Samoa this year. Uh, okay. But then uh, September through February, we typically do most of our Japanese work. Um, but we have some very big co combined concerts called uh, Sounds in Yokosuka, mm -hmm. uh, where we combine with the uh, Yoko Yokosuka Symphony Orchestra. And we have a couple of engagements this time of year, two to four, called Hojinkais, where we go down into different uh, regions of Japan and, and put on a performance and typically have some delicious sashimi after the gig. <laughs> It must be one, I mean, honestly, it must be one of the better gigs in the Navy. It is, you know, if, uh, my humble opinion, it's the best gig, yeah. you know. But, uh, you know, I'm a musician, so but, the guy that drives the ship may say the same thing. Yeah, so, I bet right. he does. <laughs> and, and he's just as likely to crash and burn as you guys. Too, yeah. so <laughs> Tell me a bit about the training, because, again, I know a bit about the British side of things. It's very rigorous. They, they spare no expense on training you as musicians. It's, it is a good gig. And in times of war, Colin, uh, you, were, you were in the Army, yeah. right? In times of war, you'd be a stretcher bearer, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, stretcher bearer. That's, that's that's it. It. You learn about all the medical side of things, how to dress wounds and all that. In, what, in a battle such, yeah, you will be a stretcher bearer. Yeah, do you, a medical guys, stretcher bearer. Do you guys have a similar? We have, uh, we get all sorts of training. I, I, my background, I actually have uh, ASF training, which stands for Auxiliary Security Force, uh, which is essentially, I, I spent uh, six months as a... Uh, Navy SEAL. Well, I'm not a... <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me, but I turned them down. No, just kidding. No, uh, military police work, essentially. You know, I was teaching guitar at the Navy School of Music, and uh, then I'd, you know, go get a nine mil and stand at the front gate, you know? Even so, better, yeah. this job gets <laughs> better by the second. So, but, uh, you you know, we have basic uh, training, military training in, uh, you know, five shipboard firefighting skills and that sort of thing. So uh, we don't really have assignments per se, but yeah. we're we're trained like to reserve do. jobs. Exactly. Reserve. And so what happens? You would you would leave school. I mean, everybody's different these days. I'm sure most guys go to university or whatever. Mm. Uh, well, what's the youngest? Uh, the youngest. They can join you. you. Uh, well, you can join as an 18-year-old right out of uh, right out of high school. But in, in the Navy music program, uh, most of us. I, I don't know the percentage, but. It, it, it's rare that you don't have at least a bachelor's, and it's very common to have a True. master's. And even this day and age, uh, there are some doctorate level performers. I, I asked Jordy very specifically what what his title is, and he's a bandmaster. I mean, music director is a completely different gig. And I was thinking you were going to say, "Don't call me sir; I work for a living." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, funny you should say that. All uh, um, Navy American Navy bandmasters, uh, like I joined, I turned twenty eight in boot camp. I uh, joined after graduate school, but right. I still started out as an E one C. And recruit in, in boot camp because all the way the American Navy bands work is you start out enlisted first. All the officers were enlisted first. Right, and right. So that's uh, actually. E1 ens ensign? N no, I'm talking E1, E1, not O1. Enlisted, and then you have to work your way up. And We're then talking, you, can, you lie underneath the tuber and collect the dribble when he opens the Pretty much, that the floor. pretty much sums <laughs> it up. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and uh, so, you know, I think there's. I, I, I like the idea of working your way up instead of, you know, but... It is like civilian life. It's just, it's just you put more labels on it. Yeah. You know it, what I mean? It, it is really a lot. It, it is very similar except for um, during my time as a civilian musician, um, you know, if I had a toothache in the middle of the night, I couldn't go to the dentist for free, <laughs> you know, yes. like I can now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so. Fantastic. Are we going to be able to hear you guys publicly whilst you're here? Is there anything in the book, I mean? Yes, we are doing the, uh, it's the Cultural Center, I forget the name of it, we're, we're doing an outdoor performance, it's, uh, we and three other bands, I, I don't know which of the other three, but it's sort of a small, uh, short parade, and a, and a ten minute performance. Okay. And that is on Saturday. Okay, are you going to be doing all the, uh, what's it called now, marching up and down? So, yeah, the Coliseum for the yeah. tattoo? Oh, yes, definitely. That's going to be absolutely brilliant. I've got a video in front of me. It's a shame that I can't find something that, you know, it's uh, like a studio demo or something. But there's some really cool stuff. You guys are all on the lawn. There's two bands. <laughs> 
It says uh, Ultra 7 March US Navy 7th Fleet Band. You, you, you wouldn't remember enough what this was, would you? That was before my time. I do remember that one. That one uh, was under the prior bandmaster, my predecessor. Okay, and it's a Japanese piece. Let's have a little listen to a, a bit. We do do that piece now. We still have it in the repertoire. It's. I bet you do. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see now. Uh, yeah, Ultra 7 March. Let's give it a bit of a whirl here for a few seconds. Having said it's one of the most glamorous jobs in the Navy, don't be too fooled. In this video, it's actually pouring down. They haven't got any trousers on, and they're standing in three feet of dog poo. <laughs> so it's, it's quite good, actually. <laughs> Lovely one. Colin, you know, made me laugh. I was, uh, was watching Bill Bailey. He does that uh, guide to the orchestra. Crack me up. He was talking about the trombone being the, the cuddly uncle of the orchestra. And da -da -da -da, you know, they're reliable. No valves, no buttons. And then we were talking about Navy SEAL. Bill says, of course, uh, it also doubles as a snorkel. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to meet you, Jordy. It's an absolute pleasure. Best of luck. Thank you very much. I'm sure you can't tell me when you're out of here, but bon voyage, and when you come back, uh, love to hear you again.